you. Now we're going to focus on healthy neighborhoods, which I know that is important to many of us, all of us, as a matter of fact. Newark's cancer and asthma rates are more than double that of Essex County suburbs due to exposure to exhaust and some of the things that were already mentioned. The city's health department can play an important role in helping to better understand and intervene on critical environmental health problems like asthma and lead poisoning. And we all know that these contribute to students not coming to school on a regular basis that impacts their performance. What specific actions would you have the Department of Health take to improve environmental health outcomes throughout the city? First, we have to change it back from this child and family well-being thing and, and have a Department of Public Health. That's number one. And the mayor needs to, the mayor needs to organize a vision for healthy neighborhoods in the city. It needs to be led by the mayor. We need to begin to involve organizations like Weekway Park Association, Ironbound Community Corporation, Clean Water Fund, the Water Group, other organizations that have been doing the work on the ground every single day, right? We need to send community, uh, these folks out to do assessments of air quality in the neighborhood. On Clinton Avenue, on top of the firehouse, we have a, a device that detects the air quality, but it's not enough, and it's very cost prohibitive to build them all over the city. So we have to be creative about the ways that we measure the air quality in our neighborhoods and our community. Uh, we have to force Port Authority to begin to, uh, uh, to do something about the kind of emissions that come out of Port Authority. Passaic Valley Sewage Company the same way, PSENG the same way, all these big businesses and industries in the, in the city the same way. We need a mitigation fund. So uh, what I talked about earlier in terms of uh, ships that are coming in with more containers, we can have a container storage tax. We can't tax the containers going back and forth because that's the federal uh, government's job. We can tax the containers as they sit and use part of that to balance the budget, but another part of that to create a mitigating fund to begin to partner with these industries to get create opportunities for us to mitigate the circumstances centered around poor air quality. We also need health assessments. People are going to these neighborhoods to begin to determine the health quality of, of people's families, of their children, begin to set up mobile networks in neighborhoods and the communities to service people around asthma, pass out asthma pumps, if you will, different information and education around air quality. And we need to do something about the kind of fuel that's being burned in these homes. You know, they have uh, a number six and number four fuel burning in people's homes. We have to do something to bring phase or uh, what, what these big businesses and big industry, excuse me, and phase them off of that and begin to get cleaner air. In that. And we can start with Newark's fleet uh, and Newark's buildings first. Uh, you know, modernizing the truck fleet at the port is, is fundamental. Uh, about 85% of the cargo that is transferred from the port uh, is, trans is transported by truck. And most of these trucks are very old, are very dirty, and are, are emitting pollutants into the air that is literally causing Norcos to die from cancer uh, and to get asthma. Uh, there's a reason we have such high levels of cancer in the city of Newark, and it's because of the pollutants uh, connected to the port and, frankly, the range of super fun sites that we have, uh, particularly in the Ironbound uh, and other parts of the city. Uh, so you're going to have a very aggressive mayor uh, in me on these issues. We're going to push the state uh, Department of Environmental Protection. We're going to we're going to push uh, the federal Environmental Protection Agency to make sure they're cleaning up all of the pollutants that we have in our community. Oftentimes, they'll agree to do half or to do partial, and we need to be very clear what that means. And when there's partial remediation, we have federal authorities, we have state authorities who are saying we're willing to see Norfolk die because we don't want to make the investments to clean up uh, the pollutants that we've had in so much of our community. There's something called environmental racism, and we've seen that in the city of Norfolk for a long period of time, where our community is disproportionately the site uh, where all sorts of pollutants are housed, where all sorts of uh, toxins are housed. Uh, when you have a disproportionate amount of traffic that causes us to die. It's not coincidental. And so you're going to have a mayor who's going to be very aggressive uh, in that regard. Uh, we're also going to make sure that our developmental plans build in environmental impact studies so that when we bring in new development into our neighborhoods, into our city, we actually have a concrete, tangible, and intentional assessment of what is the environmental consequences of this new development that's coming into our neighborhoods so that we can then input remedies from the beginning. So let's not wait till after the fact and see Norkers uh, who are more unhealthy. Let's build in these remedies uh, from the beginning. And then the third piece, we want to empower Norkers with information. Uh, at the end of the day, we want Norkers to have information so Norkers know what it is that they're doing. Again, when I grew up and thought cheese doodles was lunchtime, that's because I didn't know any better. 
And so we want to give our Norcas more information about caloric intake, about nutrition, so they can make better choices, so that Norcas can engage in more exercise and more healthy living, uh, so that they can make better choices for their lives as well.